Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be continuing working on the uh, two CBXs, mainly the customer uh, red CBX, and I'll be working on the Left for Dead CBX there, the silver one, uh, after this bike is finished. Um, I also want to uh, remind everyone or to the new listeners that uh, to check out the rest of my channel, I've got uh, CBX videos, I have videos on my 69 and my 67 Camaro, as well as my uh, um, 1100F bike. So, uh, and please, uh, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. So in this first part of the video, I am, it, I'm kind of going through fast here just showing that I take all of the black plastic parts that I'll be using in this video and installing and polishing them up with some cleaner wax and some back to black to make them look as close to uh, original factory uh, condition as possible. Um, it really is the best way. Some people repaint them and so on, but that really does not look as nice as it is when you try to bring it back by repolishing them. So our next step here is that we have to install the air box for the CBX and the issue with the air box is that as you can see here these indentations right here are where the frame rails where it wraps around this frame rail right here so what happens is and then you have this the 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 other part of the air box the second part is on this bulged out area or I hear this flat area well the problem is that that sticks out so far that if you have the engine in its normal position you can't get the entire air box through here so when you try to do that you immediately hit that flat portion back here. So, as a result, you have to tilt the engine down. So, in order to do that, you have to re remove the, the main motor mount up here at the top, which I've already done. I never actually reattached it yet. And then you have to disconnect these small upper motor mounts you do that last and then you have to remove all of the through bolts at the back of the engine so you have to remove this top one right here you do not have to remove the swing arm one obviously and you keep the bottom bolt in place because that will be the bolt that pivots the engine down. So in order to do that, you remove all those things. And in this case, I don't have the, the chain attached yet, but if you're removing the air box from a complete bike, then you have to remove the rear wheel and disconnect the chain. Because as the engine tilts down, it moves the chain forward or the front gear forward and it stretches and it won't go all the way down. So in this case, you don't really have to tilt it very far, but you still have to loosen up the back wheel and either move the back wheel all the way forward or remove it completely if you have to. So then, the next step is you have to put a, a jack up underneath there, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So I have the jack set up down below the engine, 
and <clears throat> right now I don't have an oil filter hooked up to the engine yet but it doesn't matter you, you put a piece of wood here between the oil filter housing and the engine block down here at the bottom and I've got all the bolts uh, out of the engine or at least the top ones are loosened <clears throat> and the uh, I just have to remove this one bolt here at the bottom and once you have them loose you should have you shouldn't have to use a wrench you should be able to turn them by hand and if you can't then you adjust the engine a little bit either up or down there see I raised it just a little bit I was able to pull that out by hand same with the other side now the other side I can't turn but just raised it up a tiny little bit and then I was able to turn it okay so then you remove these top ones these top ones are really sensitive they're just tiny little bolts and you can strip them really easily you have to get that out of there completely because as the engine tilts those would be in the way of the carburetors moving forward okay so at this point it's really crucial that you be careful because right now the only thing holding the engine up is the jack so then you very very carefully lower the engine down So as you can see the engine's lowering down and I think that might be as far as you have to go now one thing that I forgot to mention too is you have to disconnect your um, throttle cables either here or at the you don't want to actually you don't want to undo them here way too difficult to get reattached but you want to at least loosen them up or, or remove them from the handlebars uh, right now I don't have them hooked up um, or they're actually very loose so they're fine but you don't want to, you want to make sure that those don't bind up on you so hopefully we've got enough room here to pull the uh, to push the uh, air box in. And as you can see there it went right in. Make sure your wire harness is on top. And you don't want to get carried away pushing these boots on. You just want to kind of gently push them on. Because remember, the bike's only being held by the jack. 
So that looks like it's in place. So now you want to raise the engine back up. And I get a long screwdriver to hook into this top motor mount right here. Just kind of as a guide to line it up. Then you want to reattach your top motor mount. So you want to put your small ones in first. And you want to start again by hand tightening only. And you don't want to tighten them, you want to make you want to keep them loose. Okay, you want you want to be able to jiggle that around. Then you start your bottom one again by hand. If it shows any resistance whatsoever, stop what you're doing and, and try to adjust the engine up or down. Like right now, they won't start. The threads won't start. So I'm going to, first of all, look at the hole. Okay, and it shows that it looks like I have to raise the engine up a little bit. Okay, and there it started. Then you want to do the same on the other side. Then on your, you can pull your screwdriver out on this top through bolt here. You want to get that back through again. Okay, so then at that point, and only at that point, do you want to tighten your top uh, motor mounts. And I usually tighten the top ones first, because they're such small little bolts and they, they can strip out so easily. And I just very lightly tighten them to secure the engine and then you do the bottom one next. So these chalky weathered turn signals as you can see here they're they're all chalky and kind of white. They'd start turning white on you and it's because the plastic dries out and loses moisture so you have to reintroduce moisture to there so first of all you have to wax out or polish out the uh, the uh, the corrosion off of the surface and I use the cleaner wax for that as well. And you'll see how nice these turn out at the end. Now, 
pretty much all of these are cracked over time they crack right here at the at the joint and even if you spend a lot of money on buying some brand new NOS ones in a couple of years they'll crack too so you'll have to decide whether you want to spend that money I have on my show bike I had brand new NOS turn signals on that bike two or three years ago and they're all cracked right now then I get mothers back to black or any of the products that are for the black trim will probably work and you have to really kind of go over it a number of times over time you know over a couple of weeks time you just kind of put a little bit on there every other day and aside from the cracks they'll look really great You can see they look really, really nice. And again, you just keep putting that back to black on there and eventually they'll, they'll keep their color. So I'm going to install this assembly now so that I can get the headlight shell on and hook up the wire harness the way it should be inside the headlight shell. So you want to make sure your rubber feet are on there and your wire harness goes over the top here. Also your throttle cables. And as some of you may know, the CBX headlight shell is unique to the CBX only, 79 and 80 only. The 79 shell has 422 in the number there. I don't know if you can see that or not. And the 80 has a 469, but the 79, either 422 or 469, will fit both 79 and 80. But one year only, CBX only, and these things are very, very expensive. And the reason they break is because there is a tab here that the genius shade tree mechanics don't know about and when they go to remove the headlight they force it nothing's designed to be forced <laughs> but anyway they force it and then they break the shell right there so be careful if you have a really nice one So these harnesses go through these three openings in the headlight and you kind of have to let them fall naturally into the holes. And then there, there are these mounting brackets in here 
where each one of these plug heads press into in an organized fashion. So this is the this is the fattest part of the harness right here. And I put that through the largest opening down at the bottom. And then you have the one coming down from the handlebars and the other one here, which I kind of just run it through the right and the left opening. And actually you could you could run a couple of these on the on the large harness through that top opening as well. Then you have the wires coming out of the turn signal stalks on those sides, right and left. And those go into the right and the left opening of the headlight shell as well. So then once you get the, all that buttoned up, then the next step is, yeah, put the bands on, on both the, uh, right at the air box, and then uh, there's two sets of bands that go here on the intake tubes. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Also, uh, in the next video, we will attach the wire harnesses. You know, we'll get the, uh, all of the other sub harnesses coming up and attaching to this air box area where all the harnesses come together. And I have to I have to take this back off, put the starter in. And we'll be doing that on the next video. Also, I'll show you how to get this black plastic uh, back to as as much black as possible uh, now that it's cleaned up. So that will be on the next video and stay tuned for that. It should be here in the next few days. So thank you for watching. And again, as usual, please like, share, and subscribe. It helps support the channel. And we'll see you on the next one.